Hey everyone, it's Alex, and today I have my fall 2021 book haul for you. I will say that with some of these, they're actually from the library too that I picked up yesterday. Um, because when I think about it, for the like maybe the second half of the year from July and onward, my reading, unfortunately, by comparison to the beginning of this year, I think is unfortunately falling flat. So with these books, I'm hoping that between the ones from the library and also ones I've acquired for the past month or two, that they're ones that will like really knock me out because I can name maybe like two or three of those kinds of books that I read in the beginning of the year that might fit that description. So I hope with the ones I have here um, that they do me justice too. Uh, to close out the end of the year. I'll go ahead and start with the ones from the library and the first one is actually a poetry collection and it's the 20 Love Poems and a Song of Despair by Pablo Neruda. I know that this is like a pretty famous poetry collection or one that's cited pretty often although I say cited when I distinctly remember having like a tumbler or if you had a tumbler between 2010 to 2013 or probably even now you'll probably find a lot of poems there that are poorly cited and uh, people forget it's by Pablo Neruda. But I think it's interesting because I believe flipping through this that it maintains the original translation but then it has the English translation of the poem so it'd be interesting to understand what those differences are. Although I don't know Spanish but um, I'm sure there's maybe a few in here because they're so short of kind of what I can fit between those pieces and translation of maybe things that are lost and maybe what's also gained from the English translation too. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. This next book I got from the library was a big booktube hotties junior recommendation and that's The Death of Vivek Oji by Kweke Amezi and I know between the booktube hottie juniors like Rebecca, Ben, and Iggy, I know they all at least like Kweke Amezi and how their writing is like at least from what I know, to be this like nice blend of magical realism possibly, but also just good and fresh and unique writing. So I think if I remember this right that this one is about a mother who lost her son, but maybe it's like kind of like a ghost story too. But I think between this one and Freshwater I've heard that there are those magical realism vibes, which is really a genre that does not work out for me. So I've never read a Mezzi before, but Hopefully it sounds like with their writing that it's something that I can pick up on and um, if anything at least find refreshing and new. So uh, between my library halls here I think I'll probably start with this one. Another novel I have from the library is What Are You Going Through by Sigrid Nunez. I've read Sigrid Nunez before with The Friend which I really loved and is often a book that I recommend to a lot of people getting into fiction or literary fiction. And by reading the description of this, I've heard, or yeah, this sounds a lot like the exact same thing as The Friend, except through like random people that our narrator meets and just trying to like uncover the meaning behind their conversations, which kind of reminds me of Outline by Rachel Cusk too. So I'm curious between like this sense of voice that I really liked in Nunez's The Friend, I hope I have that same like comforting feeling of reading this. Um, which I've heard this is good too but maybe like between the two that people still recommend The Friend over this one but um, it's nice to always have like a good haul where I've at least read the author before so I know that I'll probably at least like it a little if I've enjoyed them before. Now moving on to some nonfiction that I have. I have Just Us by Claudia Rankine which I've read Citizen by Rankine before and I really liked it whenever I had to read it for school. And it's no surprise with that class I took in school it was about uh, racial justice or injustice so I really like how Rankine through Citizen really blended this hybrid of remaining both informative but like constantly investigative towards especially um, and it's probably going to be the same here too uh, especially the presence of whiteness within America and how that often affects other people in terms of thinking of uh, black Americans specifically but also just general thoughts on oppression and especially systematic oppression I think will be really interesting through this um, and yeah so uh, Rankine often uses forms of investigation 
through these ideas that she has through mixed media. So I'm really excited about this one. And the last haul I have from the library, which seems to be pretty popular with this sticker on it that it can't be renewed, is A Swim in a Pond in the Rain by George Saunders. This was a Jalen Bar in the Bookcase suggestion because I know he really loved this, but it seems to be a mix of like George Saunders, like I think there are maybe stories in here, but also his like critique of stories and what it means to be a storyteller and his own approach to writing. So that's always a theme in nonfiction that I really like whenever writers talk about writing in general. Although I've read George Saunders before and I read his Lincoln and the Bardo, which I thought was fine. Um, but I do know that he has this really wonderful little speech that he did called Congratulations, by the way, which is always something I really love like sharing or like uh, whenever I briefly taught for grad school, um, teaching that uh, speech and stuff like that. So I really like George Saunders' sentiments towards writing, I think. So if I get more of that vibe in this, I think I'll really enjoy this one. So now moving on to the books I actually own, um, I will give a little caveat to this because I'm really trying not to buy books as much anymore. So hence why I've been going to the library more. But I'm running into this problem where I've been going on dates recently and a bookstore is always a good idea, especially in DC where there are so many. So naturally, sometimes like on these dates, I'll recommend a book to somebody and then they buy it. So I feel obligated to buy something. So that's mainly the bulk of why I have these books because I just bought them on the fly while I've been out so <laughs> that's mainly the reasoning behind these purchases but they're all books I've like kind of heard about before and like eventually wanted to read but they're basically the reason why I own them now. So up first I wanted to mention The Undocumented Americans which is a book I think I briefly mentioned in reference whenever I talked about Infinite Country by Patricia Engel which is a book I really liked but I knew I wanted to get some sort of nonfiction lens at what it's like to be an undocumented American in the States. And I think with this book, it kind of gets into that. Um, I know it's nonfiction, but on the back of this too, kind of being labeled as social science or history. So I think between the author's own experience of being an undocumented American or maybe having family members that are, I think it'll be really interesting to get kind of the timeline of that and how it's affected our perception of things like DACA and things like that. I think when the writer starts as early as 2016, which I'm sure by coincidence, um, or not coincidences, with Trump's presidency. So I'm really excited to get this, or get to this one too. Um, I've maybe had it the longest out of this haul of the books I'm talking about today. Up next is another instance of a writer I've read before, although it's been a really long time, so I'm excited to read more of her, but it's Sula by Toni Morrison. I've read The Bluest Eye by Morrison before, but uh, someone also in the comments too of one of my past videos, I'd ask them maybe where I can start with Morrison next and then they recommended Sula so I nabbed this one up. But I think this is about uh, female friendship too or at least about two young girls who are growing into womanhood but they kind of like diverge into different areas of their life and that kind of polarizes them. So I'm really curious to read this one. So Morrison is always a writer I've maybe wondered could be one of those writers I really latch on to, but I know also she's like somewhat in the realm of like magical realism too sometimes in her books. So um, I think that's why I kind of like strayed from her, but Sula sounds uh, kind of up my alley if it's about like female friendship stuff. So while on one of these dates, I knew like an easy pick me up that I could just buy and uh, know I would enjoy is Samantha Irby, uh, with this one being her latest Wow No Thank You. I've read Irby's uh, We Are Never Meeting in Real Life and also Meaty, and her essays are always just like a really good time. So there's something I think really rare about writers who uh, try to write about really, or just writing about humor in general. I think that's a hard translation, but I think Irby really knows how to pull it off. And Samantha Irby is also like a writer who I really enjoy just watching interviews of too, so I can hear her voice in my head every time I like read her stuff. But this seems like a perfect like pick me up, like if I'm ever traveling somewhere and just need something in between. So that's a great uh, resource I have with this one. Up next is another book I just randomly saw and picked up while I was in the bookstore, and that is Kink, which is a story collection. And there are writers I recognize in here, like Larissa Pham, Alexander Chi. Brandon Taylor and Carmen Maria Machado. So 
I'm really interested uh, with this being edited by R.O. Kwan, who I have not read before, but I know she wrote The Incendiaries, and Garth Greenwell, who I, so far my encounters with him, is writing I have not liked. So I'm curious with these other writers I've read before, kind of uh, like how this all shapes into the theme, I guess, of just uh, kinks or maybe just like sex in general or something. This seems like a nice little palette cleanser in between stuff since it is a story collection, which I could similarly, like Samantha Irby, just bring with me somewhere to read on and off. This next book is a novel and I haven't really heard anyone talk about it on booktube, but I know I like maybe saw it in some list for some books coming out in 2021, and that is The Startup Wife. The reason I gravitated towards this is because I know earlier this year, with this book being about, I think it's two women and their friends and they come up with this app, and I think through that um, it sort of propels them into this new lifestyle or their new jobs, but I think it's supposed to be a satire on like startup culture, and in a way that's kind of a red flag to me because with Black Buck by Mateo Escarapor, which similarly was supposed to be the satire on like startup culture or working in tech, I found that to be really not successful. So I'm hoping this can be like a counterpart of sorts and really work a lot better for me. So I have really high hopes for this one, but hopefully I'm not disappointed in it. The second to last book I have here is one that was actually sent to me by Catapult, which is a publisher I really love. And this one is How by Ye Chun, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, but I know with um, the title here, apparently it's maybe one of, if not the most common word in uh, Chinese. So I think it tries to play in that with this collection, with this collection being about Chinese women and between living in China and also the United States, kind of how they get used to feeling ostracized and uh, how they feel like they get to know themselves. So I've actually read uh, maybe three stories or so from this already and really like them. I think there's like this very, is suspicious the right word? I would say suspicious delicacy towards them where like in one sense they're like very go with the flow but then maybe something like, I, I just feel really sucked in to while I'm reading them although I don't think about them often, like a bit after having read them. But yeah, this came out earlier in September, so um, it is out now, but I'm liking it so far. So I'm curious what I'll make of the rest of the stories whenever I eventually get to them. And last but not least is a book that I actually uh, maybe are, I'm like a few pages in, but I'll probably finish this today, is Real Estate by Deborah Levy. This is her final contribution to her living autobiography series with her first one being Things I Don't Want to Know and her second one being The Cost of Living. Both or I read uh, the first one last year, and then I read Cost of Living earlier this year. So it's great timing for me that this recently also came out. Um, and shout out to Bridge Street Books in DC, because I went to two other bookstores and they did not have this whenever it was released. Levy has always been someone with her fiction, I think so far has been fine, because I've only read Hot Milk by her, but with her series with this, with her nonfiction, um, kind of similar to what I was talking about with Saunders. I just really like when writers write about writing. So I've uh, really liked Things I Don't Want to Know, but I really loved Cost of Living. So I hope that this will be uh, kind of a final sort of encompassing uh, thoughts that Levy has with her approach to writing. So that does it for my fall 2021 book haul uh, between what I got from the library that I have to return in a couple of weeks and then <laughs> those books I bought for, you know, going on dates and stuff. Although again, the eyes on the prize being that hopefully, at least with one of these books, they become like a like beloved book by me uh, by the end of the year. Since so far uh, between July and now, I haven't really had a book like that. So I'm really hoping that one of these between this large selection will do it for me. If you have any personal suggestions of where I should start, with maybe hopefully having that feeling that I'm looking for. If you've read any of these, um, I would really love to know kind of like how I can tier them to start where and when. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.